Hello everybody, Rose here. Today I'm reacting to Foodie Beauty's live stream called Hey Guys, where she talks about Repsion because Repsion is a channel on YouTube that is extremely large. Uh, Repsion has over 700,000 subscribers and he's become recently interested in Natter and Chantal decided to poke at Repsion to get Repsion's attention and she got it. So Repsion is going to do a video on Natter and Chantal, but that was essentially her goal. She has been lacking in views and money lately. I feel she purposely poked at Repsion just to get his attention, hoping to get some hate watchers and some hate views for a while because of it. So she talks about Repsion and I've got some thoughts about the live stream, but I'll save them for as the live stream is going. So let me just go ahead and share the screen so you guys can see for yourself. So, oops, hold on a second. I'm not doing this the right way. I'm having a brain fart kind of moment. Sorry about that. So there's Miss Chantal. There she is. And we're starting in about a little over 10 minutes in because the first 11 minutes there's really nothing to talk about. 11 minutes in is when she starts talking about Repsion. So let's get to, let's get to, shall we? Something, please. And peanut butter bites. So I just want to say, I want to acknowledge I'm a mess. Yes. You fucking hate me. Okay. I've done some stupid and said some stupid shit in my life, all right? But none of that, none of that. You left out the parts where you were toxic, abusive, manipulative, greedy, narcissistic, manipulating your audience to feel sorry for you, using topics like BB and essay to make money, monetizing your own eating problem for money essentially doing self-harm content on YouTube and expecting to get compensated for it. You left those parts out, Chantal. Has anything, any relation to me having been in a abusive relationship? None of that. So I'm, I know people are, yay. So a huge YouTuber like fucking Repsion is going to fucking, is going to really find me, uh, speak on the issue of fucking matter matter no i'm disappointed that somebody a big youtuber like fucking repsion is going to use his big platform to fucking victim shame because his reply to my concern you know what he's not victim shaming just like with you he's allowed to do whatever content he wants and air his feelings and opinions in his videos just like you chantal just like you being on YouTube and you doing the content on your channel, which is essentially non-tent. You don't do anything on your channel to entertain people. You don't do anything on your channel to lift people up. And you're going to criticize somebody else's content. You know, you're over here saying, Repsion, I'm so disappointed. He's going to use his platform to victim shame people. What you really mean. What you really want to say to people is, I am so disappointed that Repsion is covering Natter and not me. Me, me, me. It's got to be about me. I want to be first. Cover me first. I'm the more important one. That's what you really want to say. Burn video was, well, bitch. Not, he didn't say bitch, but you know he's sick in it. You did give him a platform. And then he adds into that, that slippery slope of... Now, well, what did he lie about? What about that is a lie? You did give Natter a platform. You said yourself in more than one live stream, you created the Natter El Shammy channel. You set it up for him. You set up the pay portion. You filmed the videos. You edited them. You did the thumbnails. You did all of that. You even encouraged people on your channel to go over to his channel and be his audience. He has a bunch of subs because of you. His channel did not grow organically on its own naturally. 
he was writing piggyback off of you and you promoting him. You brought him to YouTube. You set him up on YouTube. You set him up with an audience. You did all of that. Knowing what he was, knowing what he did, knowing how he did it, you still did it. You exposed him to the YouTube audience. Knowing he was a grifter and a scam artist, knowing he was all about the ladies, you did that. You did. And you also dropped the charges. Oh, nice. So now we've gone from slightly implied victim shaming to full-blown fucking victim shaming. So you want to go there? You know, I don't think any charges were ever filed. That whole trip to the police station, if you guys want to go back and find the clip somewhere, all she did was drive up to a building, park, disappear for a while, and come back. We never saw her walk into a police station and talk to a police officer. I think it was all for show. And then later on, when people were asking for some more further proof that she filed charges, what did she do? She produced a fake ass letter. It looked phony with parts of it that were cut out. None of it looked correct. There was no correct seal to try to back up her lie. Rather than confess that it was a lie, she tried to back up her lie with another lie, with a fake phony letter. Phony. And you want to start a war? Because I will. But I don't have to do it with nasty words or... But you will. I mean, honestly, his entire audience are people who... Probably people who fucking watch people like that one guy there. What's that? You're classifying his audience and you're making assumptions based on no facts. You don't watch Repsion. You don't watch him. You're too busy running all over YouTube and Twitter looking to see what people are saying about you. So you're making assumptions about Repsion and his audience with no facts. And you're doing it for the sake of being a nasty person, just saying nasty things. That is man. Like, he ha probably has a younger audience who just likes to fucking slay people. You know, like lynch mob people or whatever. I don't know. He discusses people and he has an impressionable audience. Like, he has a big audience. You know what I mean? And his message that he's going to get across is because I'm hated. I deserve to fucking, like, I don't get it. Like, what? Like, you, you realize, right, that the majority of women who are in an abusive relationship, the majority of them end up trying to drop the charges actually it's so fucking common repsion that they actually prevent women they actually try to prevent women by having the crown decide if there's going to be a case that's it so i mean you acting like i'm the only fucking person to i mean like i was being heavily manipulated by this man at the beginning i don't want to hear it i really don't want to hear it chantal I don't want to hear it because yesterday you were telling people you were still buying them groceries and it was you sending a message to Didi trying to talk to Natter. You were reaching out to someone to speak to your abuser. You did that. You did that. So either A, he didn't abuse you, you lied, which I believe that to be true. Or you're really messed up in the head. You can't keep your story straight. You keep swerving in and out of lanes. One minute he's an abuser, he's a horrible person, he did all these things. The next minute you're shacking up with him in motel and hotel rooms, bringing him gift baskets, buying him food, buying him clothes, paying his phone bill, paying his rent, paying his cable. Listen, you're a liar. We all know that. But even after all these years of lying, you still haven't figured out how to make your lies believable. Or maybe you have and you just don't care. Which is it? You can't sit there and paint someone an abuser one minute and then be running to them the next minute. He's a horrible person. He's a loser. Yet you were trying to call Dee Dee 
to talk to him. Yet you're paying for his groceries. Yet you're not afraid to spend time in his company. Yet it was you yesterday doing your live stream, which I just covered. You reminiscing about Natter and talking about I, I should I should get him back. If he was so abusive, why would you want him back? Why would you ever thought that had that thought in your head? You wouldn't. You wouldn't unless he never abused you in the first place. Beginning of our relationship. I was in love with him. I would do anything for him. So yes, making him a fucking YouTube channel after he fucking guilt tripped me for ruining his reputation. Well, at least help me make a YouTube channel, blah, blah, blah. And like I said before, I didn't even really have to help him. He said, I'm going to do a YouTube channel. And I was like, all right. And he fucking clicked a button. Okay. Then why did you do everything? You said you did everything for him. You set up the channel. You made the videos, you made the thumbnails, you did the editing. He didn't do anything. He let you do it all, and you were very happy to do it all because that meant the less that he knew about YouTube, the more that he would have to make you do, and the more time you could spend around him, Chantal. You were jockeying for position so that him knowing not as much about YouTube which would, would mean that he'd always have you around, and that's what you wanted. You put yourself in a position where he would always need your help. You weren't over there trying to teach him what to do for himself so he wouldn't need your help. You purposely did everything so that he would always be calling upon you and you could spend more time around him. He downplayed his own abusive relationship? You're fucking... I mean, like, really, like, you don't even really have the right to fucking speak on this issue at all. You're not a fucking abused woman. Uh, you know what? This sounds very sexist, Chantal. You're implying that abuse uh, victims are only women. It's men, too. Regardless of gender, regardless of sexual identity, abuse matters. All victims matter. All victims count. It's not just women that get abused. Men get abused too. There are men involved in relationships with women that get abused, that are victims of DV or SA. All victims matter. All stories count. All abuse counts. Trying to imply that only women matter is bullshit. It's bullshit. And shame on you for saying that as someone that you're claiming you've been through abuse, which I believe to be bullshit. The way you've behaved and the things you've said and the way you've said them and the amount of times you said them, you haven't been through anything. You just brought up those topics on your channel to make money and you did thousands of dollars, which you wasted on drugs and food, but that's what you did with the money. You haven't been through anything. Because if you had, you'd have more respect for people who've actually been through it. You would have felt ashamed and embarrassed to trigger the people on your channel and on YouTube that you have. You would have a little bit more respect for those who have been through that kind of trauma. But you exploited that kind of trauma. You use those topics to bond with people in your audience who have been through it. That because they've been through it, they feel sympathy and understanding. And they gave you money. And that's exactly what you wanted. You wanted people to feel sympathetic towards you and feel pity for you for having gone through those horrible things. Knowing it would lead to their pocketbooks. And it did. All those months, all those thousands of dollars you made off of all this crap you brought on YouTube. But what was the cost? Triggering people, hurting people, upsetting people. But you don't care. As long as you get a big bank account, you don't care. Your fucking privileged, crappy ass fucking teenager mentality I and mean, your audience is still the same. That mentality. And you're speaking on something that you could 
make an impact on, but so could you, but you're not. You don't care to have an impact on anybody. You care to exploit people and exploit things. That's the Chantal brand. Exploit everything. Exploit everything you can for a dollar bill. That's what you stand for. Let me get on YouTube and bring out the most shocking, vulgar, disgusting content and topics to make money. Yeah, I don't matter, whatever, fucking what you got to do. But I'm just saying, like, in the process, why beat me down at the same time? I don't get that. <clears throat> no one would know who he was if it wasn't for you. Yeah, but so, like, why is that? What? <laughs> what did she just say? No one would know who he was if it wasn't for her. Uh, ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. Have you seen the size of his channel? He has over 700,000 subscribers. What do you mean? Nobody would know who he was. Your channel has less than a thousand, hundred thousand subscribers. His channel is seven times bigger than yours. So what do you mean? No one would know who he was. Boy, the ego on you is astounding. Absolutely astounding. Yeah, so then why is that he, but then he's implying that he's victimized many women. He's victimized many women? Like who? Like, how is that my fault that he's talking to women on Messenger when I didn't even know he was doing that? Because you brought him here. Because you brought him here. You introduced him to YouTube. You made the channel, knowing what he was, knowing what he was going to do. You introduced him to YouTube. You set him up here. You encouraged your audience to sub to him and to talk to him. You did that. And you never threw any strikes at him. You never tried to stop him, even now. Are you throwing strikes at Natter? You go after the reaction channels. Oh, we're leeches, we're content thieves. All the stuff that he's allegedly done to you. The way he's talked about you on his channel. Have you gone after Natter? No. Has Natter come after you and thrown a strike or two? No. He went after the other channels. Despite the fact that none of them have met him in real life and called the cops to his house. No, that was you. But yet, you two fools aren't going after each other. You go after everybody else, but not each other. That's because you two are talking behind the scenes. You're buying his groceries. You're paying the phone bill. All this crap on YouTube, it's just reviews. All the outrage, the anger, it's fake, it's phony, it's made up and continues to be made up for the sake of making that another dollar bill. Hi, Jack! I know the queen has died. I'm going to get to that, don't worry. It's like when men try to speak on women's reproductive system and it's like... <clears throat> No, but like, you know what I mean? Like, how is that my fault? Who's the victims here? Jennifer Corvina? This bitch is older than me. I had no idea they were talking. So how, how, how is that my problem that he's grooming a Jennifer Corvina? Grooming my fucking ass. This person was a willing participant too then, by that logic. Like, if you're going to go after me, you have to logically go after all these women then. You have to badmouth every woman, even Dee Dee, who you watched, get smacked around on video and is still with him. And defends him worse than what I do. And guarantee you're going to fucking defend her in your video. But, I, oh, I gave him a YouTube channel. Oh, I gave him a YouTube channel. You did. You did. No. It all goes back to you, Chantal. I know you don't want to take responsibility. You're all about duck dodging and weaving past the truth. And the truth is, you brought him to YouTube. If he did not have a channel, if you did not create a channel for him, if you didn't bring him to YouTube, would he have any contact with those women? Would they know about him? Would he have had any contact with Didi? She wouldn't have known about him. It's all because you brought him here. You did that. It all leads back to you. 
I'm not worried about my channel. I'm not worried about, I don't care if you have a lot of YouTube uh, fucking supporters. Wrong is wrong. I didn't know he was abusive at the beginning like that. Are you? Liar. 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 Those beginning live streams, you were coming on camera with bruises on you. And that's something else. Can we talk about that for a minute? It's funny. Y'all think about the content that she made before in regards to Natter. Remember those beginning live streams she would come on camera with bruises on her chest? She didn't come home with those bruises and she showed shame or embarrassment for people seeing them. She was rather proud of them, wasn't she? And saying they were for rough sex. So it went from being around Natter and them perhaps having rough, intimate relations, which she enjoyed to the point where she would come on camera and show off the bruises as if they were some kind of trophies to when she would get mad at him, suddenly that stuff became abusive. Isn't that strange? How one minute she's coming on camera showing perhaps some evidence of rough sex, being proud to show off the evidence, to suddenly she flips the script. Oh, he's abusive. Look what he did to me. Da 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 da. Kidding? Okay. Like they're acting like I fucking planned this and was like, you know, oh, it's my fault now that he was like that. Like, are you fucking kidding? You people are insane. Anyways, Jennifer was more willing than anyone. Yeah, she watched it live and continued to support him. I stopped after I fucking found all this out. And yes, I still fucking have love for him. Whatever. It's it's not like people who have not been in a relationship. Like you stopped. Why are you still paying for his groceries then? Because buying somebody food like that, buying him groceries, paying the phone bill, that sounds like you still support him. You may act like you're not supporting him on camera, but if you're buying him food, and paying and paying the phone bill you're still involved with him you're still supporting him and by that definition you are not done with him and he's not done with you because if you were done with each other you would cut each other off like this you have no way to judge it because it's hard it's so hard to explain like how you i don't know like you're fucking manipulated you fucking fall in love and it's just too fucking late and it's just hard to leave I'm not responsible for him or what he does or who he talks to, especially if I don't even know he's doing it. I'm a victim in this, just like everyone no, else. You're not. You fucking hate me? No, no. How are you a victim? Please explain that to me. How are you a victim? How can you be a victim when you made the choice to talk to him in the beginning? You made further choices to keep talking to him to spend time around him, to spend money on him, to set him up with a YouTube channel, to be part of his channel, to spend time in motel and hotel rooms, to buy him gifts, to buy him food, to defend him when people were coming for him. All of those choices were yours, Chantal, all of them. So if you're making a choice like that or choices like that, how are you a victim? If you choose to be around someone and to participate in situations like that, it's not just something that happens by happenstance. You just wander into something and it just happens. If that were the case, you would be a victim, but you're not. Why are you so desperate to paint yourself the victim? Is it because you don't want to be blamed for anything? You don't want any responsibility? Guess what? You get all the blame and you get all the responsibility. And no matter how much you try to run away from it, you're still responsible. That doesn't change that. Just because I'm a fucking piece of shit or whatever you think I am doesn't change that either. You watched one of my documentaries? Oh, cool. Mm. Oh, my God. Best latte ever. So... Yes, the queen. I didn't know the queen died. Oh, my God. I was busy all day. I didn't have time to. When did she pass away? 
yes, that happened. Queen Elizabeth has passed away. And I'm sure the royal family is in mourning right now. My condolences to the royal family. Queen Elizabeth was a true lady. There was no one like her. No one. I, my, my mom, like my family's gonna. Mm -hmm. He lied to me about everything. I can't press charges again. I, I had the cops come over. This is not, this is not, it is not my fucking job to be Captain save -a here, okay? Like, this is, I'm going through my own thing, and honestly, if you want to blame anyone, like, fucking blame YouTube, blame the cops, blame whatever. You don't fucking blame the victims, no matter what. Why, why is YouTube to blame? When you brought him here and you set him up with a channel, YouTube did not reach out and create a channel for Natter. You did. So why blame YouTube? Although, you know what, I take that back. I do blame YouTube. I do. Because your channel should have been gone a long time ago. You broke in terms of service hundreds of times, yet they get, took your channel away and gave it back. And I remember very clearly when you lost your channel, you were making all kinds of promises to people. I won't do this. I won't do that. Things will be better. And then you got your channel back. And you're as rotten as you ever were. As a matter of fact, you're worse because got, getting your channel back, it made you arrogant. It made you feel untouchable. And I also blame YouTube for letting Natter have his channel, despite the many things that he's done and he said, including, including going after a reactor and making fun of his CSA in a vicious, ugly way so youtube needs to step it up and do their job in my opinion if there's a terms of service it should apply to everyone big channels small channels all channels if they have the rules in place they should apply to everyone if you break the rules you should suffer the consequences it should be fair to everyone YouTube should not be playing favorites and saying some people have to follow the rules and some people don't based on how much money they're making us. The whole favoritism system based on the amount of money they might be making off of you or whatever, that should be of no consequence. That should be of no thought. It is my opinion from everything I've seen, this is my opinion now, it would seem, it would seem now the way that they're letting your channel go on and Natter's channel go on and the fact that Natter has abused the copyright strike system, it would seem from where I'm standing that the rules don't apply to everybody, that they pay attention to the money and if somebody's making them a lot of money, they will leave that person alone no matter what they say and whatever, no matter what they do. And maybe the terms of service, that's just to make the advertisers happy so that they put their ads and stuff on YouTube so they can make money. But the terms of service don't apply to everyone. That's the way it looks. It looks like there's some favoritism going on with YouTube. Okay, I'm sorry, but that's just wrong. Disappointing, I'm not surprised. whatever and i'm not like that's why i'm not like talking more about it i'm still in this i'm still in it still. i still have love for him so how the fuck can i be out of this and, and an advocate for women and blah 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 no so you have love for him okay but you keep going around him you want to be with him and I would not call you an advocate for anybody who's been through DV or SA for no other reason because you haven't been through those things, Chantal. No, no, fuck. But that doesn't make me a fucking bad person. You are. Right? You are a bad maybe. person. Or maybe it does, and I guess I'm a bad person, and I don't know. You what are. You're right. All I know is 
I'm just being fe- honest about my feelings, and that's it. What feelings? What feelings? She was the longest reigning queen. I know. I don't know what's going to happen. Oh, my God. There's going to be a fucking lockdown. Maybe I should stay in the house. You do anyway. In there. You stay in the house anyway. What are you talking about? I was a sweetie at the beginning of my YouTube channel. You were. I'm still a sweetie. No, you're not. Your content was a lot different in the beginning. You getting monetized was the worst thing to happen to you, to your channel, and YouTube in general. Because once you got monetized, you got greedy, and you got obsessed with the attention and the money. And everything you do on your channel now, it's all about getting the most attention for the most views and the most money. You got obsessed with the almighty dollar, Chantal. Go back four or five years ago to your content. You were doing content. Shocking, isn't it? Content. You were doing makeup looks, hauls, video game playthroughs. You weren't as exaggerated. You exaggerated yourself. You turned into a caricature of yourself for the sake of getting the most attention, the most views. All to keep it going just a little bit longer. Being monetized was the worst thing to happen to you your channel and the YouTube in general. And if you weren't on YouTube making the YouTube money, you'd be a lot healthier. You wouldn't be severely overweight. You wouldn't have the money to indulge all of your addictions and impulses. You making the YouTube money was the worst thing to happen to you. Yeah, I mean, it can be. I don't know. Dee Dee's Camilla and I'm Princess Diana. Don't compare yourself to Princess Diana. She was a lady and she was well loved. You're not. (laughs) Oh. Princess Diana was iconic. Chantal is not iconic. She's ironic, not iconic. So I'm the one without the ugly hats? Oh, was it? Was Diana having an affair with her hot limo driver? So that's all I wanted to say. You just call me embarrassing. Took me three years to leave my abusive ex, and yes, it's hard. Kim and Jerry, I've learned nobody fucking understands or even believes you. Like, unless you've been in it. You're not trying to leave him, no. You're not even trying to stay away from him. You watch his live streams. He watches you. You're not trying to stay away from each other. How can you get over somebody if you're still in contact? Neither is the rich Arab guy with the yacht. He <laughs> wishes. Culture trivia needs some brushing up on. Celebrate your grandma today. I don't even want to think about it. Good, because you won't anyway. You don't care about your family. I don't want to grieve. Hi, Lynn Nicole. You cried more over Natter than your own grandmother. Right. And I also want to say, it's very easy for you guys to hate him. Like, I need to mix it on You didn't have an emotional attachment to him. Like, you can't expect me to react the same way to him and just be over his shit just like that. If 
But at the end of the day, like I said, blaming me for giving him a platform. He did, though. Making people aware of him. I mean, yeah, I guess. No, not guess. You did. I guess, yeah, technically that did happen. Yeah, so it did happen. You did that. Just just say it. How? Just say it. Look, yes, I, I like this guy. And I wanted us to be together. And part of us being together was me making a channel where we could do things together. Just say it. That was the plan. You wanted to be with him, all wrapped around him, and you made a channel so that you guys could do something together. Just say it. No, I guess about it. Just freaking say it. But your implication, I mean, what's the what's your point? You know what I mean? Like It took me so long to finally see the real him. So how can you accuse Blake? Yeah. Okay. What do you mean it took me so long to see the real him? I don't think Natter ever hid who he was. I think he's always been the way that he is. He didn't just approach you in a different way with a different personality. You fell hard. For this guy the way he was i'm sure from the very beginning he was rude condescending dominating telling you what to do and you said that part of him turns you on you were intrigued by it you were intrigued by a guy that could tell you no because nobody's ever told you no you looked at that as a challenge and you were determined to win the challenge you were determined to get this guy under your thumb and over a year and thousands of dollars later, he's still not under your thumb. And that still intrigues you. You still look at that as a challenge. And even though being involved with him has ruined you and ruined your channel, the way you're seeing things, if you end up with Natter at some point or another, by some method or another, it was all worth it. Give me for something that I... I didn't know any better. You know what I mean? Yes, you did. And then, because the feelings were there before I knew he was doing anything bad, and especially doing all this behind my back. So He didn't do it behind your back, though. He was sitting there talking to women in front of your face. And the reaction channels, they exposed. He was on dating sites. They exposed that for you. You knew, you just didn't care. You were determined to hang on to him no matter what. So this guy was on dating sites, talking to women. You found out you chose to stay. And then the whole situation with the STDs, that happened. You chose to stay. And then all the alleged abuse, that happened allegedly, although I don't believe it, he still chose to stay. You supported him. You paid the bills. You paid the rent. You bought him gifts. You chose to be around him, Chantal. Oh, those feelings don't just go away. Because I'm asking myself this, Barney. How can I still have feelings for him? How? After everything? How? I don't know. You know, Chantal, there is such a thing called emotional intelligence. Have you ever heard of that? Emotional intelligence. And you have it when you have feelings, you have emotions, but you can deal with them intelligently. You don't let your emotions rule your life, rule your thoughts. You let emotions sit at the table when you have conversations with yourself and your thoughts. But you also let reason and logic sit at the table, too. And emotion can be on one side saying, I'm feeling this. I feel love. I'm so attached to this guy. Logic and reason sit beside uh, emotion and say, we understand. Emotion is your job. But our job is to come in here and have these conversations with you and let you know, Hey, you're feeling something, 
but let's apply a little reason and logic to this situation. You're, you feel these things, but it doesn't mean that you've got to stay with this person and put up with their shit. It doesn't mean that this person's right for you. That's emotional intelligence. When you treat your emotions intelligently, emotions are very important to have. Feelings are very important to have, but to apply reason and logic to what you feel. You don't let emotion sit in the driver's seat and drive all the time. You let reason and logic drive and ride shotgun and emotion is in the back seat, giving their input. You let all three work together. You don't have emotional intelligence. Well, I just like, how do I look like the guy from The Witch? The Puritan father? I don't know. You started throwing me at you. I promoted his channel. Of course I did. I edited for his channel. Right. I wanted him to be successful. I loved him. All right. So, yeah. And, and you also wanted a second platform to get attention. That was another goal of creating the Natter channel. That gave you a second platform you could put yourself on, you attention-seeking freak. I did a lot for him. Have I stopped doing it? Of course I have. Liar. That's what matters. <laughs> but you buy his groceries. I wanted to speak with him because I was I missed him. And I don't know what even what I would have said to him. Like when I think about it now, what would I have said? Honestly, it's like a compulsion. Like I wanted to talk to him and I freaked out. I was panicking. I was like, I was feeling really melancholy, as Dee Dee says. Yeah, I was feeling melancholy. Of course I was. Imagine missing an abuser. Really? Uh, exactly, Rhonda. So at the same time, you can also say giving him a platform also showed who he really was. Exactly. Because he would still be getting away with shit. Yep. So there you go. So let's expose him to more women and let him hurt more women. Congratulations, Chantal. You made that happen too. What are you talking about? Why don't you stick to the real issue and stop fucking blaming everybody? And I'm going to hit you with something heavy, Chantal. If you had not brought him to YouTube, all the women that he talked to, that he grifted and scammed, would that have happened? No. And would what happened to May, would that have happened to her? If he had not had a channel, if nobody knew about him? No. No, it wouldn't. Wheelchairs are not good for me. Mm -mm. They make me like. It's your fucking sympathy. Nobody needs your sympathy. Okay, so this super chat. You know exactly how abusive he is, and you're still running back. You deserve zero sympathy. Agreed. At this point, listen, if she wants to talk to Natter, if she wants to spend time around Natter, she's going to do it, regardless of what any of us have to say, whatever our opinions and our feelings are. And you know what, Chantal, if you go running back to Natter and something happens, don't expect sympathy or understanding from the audience because you have the choice to stay away from him. You've always had that choice. You've never made that choice. It's all about wanting to spend time with him in whatever way you can, having conversations with him, watching his live streams. You're not trying to stay away. You're trying even to this day to get closer and to be close with him. This man that you claimed hurt you. I helped him with a cooking channel. So is Dee Dee to blame for the second channel? People just want to blame you for everything. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Stay mad. Including Repsion and your fucking seven hundred thousand subs. 
Oh, she's so mad about that. She's so mad that Repsion has 700,000 subs. She wishes she had 700,000 subs. And she's over there stuck at 91K. She hasn't even gotten her silver YouTube play button, which is a plaque they send you once you do hit 100K. She's been stuck at 91K for the longest because her content sucks. I don't give a fuck. You Eat do. shit. Jealous. Be jealous. It is sad about the queen dying. You don't care about her. So, anyway. Woke up, talked to my family. Hung up with the cats a bit. Chubby fucking you. Shouldn't be dead. Got ready. Tried plucking my wig. That, I'm not being a jerk. That wig looks horrible. I think she needs a wig that's slightly below her shoulders, layered with bangs. I think bangs would be a great improvement. The, the middle part ain't doing you no favors, Chantal. That wig looks bad. I, not being a jerk, I'm just stating my opinion. That wig is wrong. That dress is wrong. They both look bad. Mm -hmm. I know. People with another man. So I was like, and he had like, I'm like, where are you? So he shared his location because he was walking around downtown. So I parked, I put my GPS to his location. Clearly you were abused. There is no doubt, but you are not a docile woman. Stand up against manner. She's not standing up against him. That's the problem. She's standing with him. She's standing beside him. Stand by your man. That's Chantal. She's standing by her man. She's buying him stuff, even to this day. She's supporting him financially. She's even talking about him on her channel, so people will go to his channel and give him views. She's not standing up to him. She's standing beside him. Yeah. Baby Junior. But I think she wanted to meet someone nice, you know? The stress is really too short, I know. It is. Hi, Jamie. Just a few fashion tips, Chantal, that that print is just horrible on you. Is that a zebra print? I don't even know what that is. That pattern on you is bad. The neckline is bad. Everything about your appearance today is bad. Nothing looks good. Mm -hmm. He might be the one, you think so? And then, what, what's confusion? And he's like, you drive me crazy. He said it in the translator. Try. I was gonna help him. I was gonna like rebuild my credit. I thought, I thought we would make a lot of money together doing couples vlogs. And then he could get a, a food truck making falafels. Yeah, good luck with that. Food trucks cost a lot of money. And then there's the issue of getting all of the, uh, what do you call them? Pass inspections and all that, the equipment, the food. That's very expensive. More than what Chantal has. That was my dream. And besides that, his food sucks. At the time. And so now, excuse me, I had this all planned out. So excuse me, my plan crashed and burned. And how is he going to have a food truck when he doesn't have a driver's license? I'm just saying. I could have had falafels every single day for lunch, breakfast. You guys weren't together for that long. He says that. He's a liar. Why do you like think he's a liar for everything else? Too louder, baby. I'm almost there. <laughs> Just tune it out. 
that he's the one that fought for you is true. Transparent, you know my issues with him. He knows them. I'm not the type of person, I'm like the person I was ranting about in this video, who doesn't like somebody for whatever reason, their character, whatever. So I'm going to judge them on every single fucking thing that they do. And every single thing that they do is going to be wrong. I'm not that kind of person. Yes, you are. Well, I don't mind being fake as long as it's like my hair. I don't mean being I don't mind being fake. But yet you come on camera you insist that you're being a real person. <laughs> you know what I mean. Okay, you know what? I think we're done here. Let's move on to the comments. Uh, Monica says, love doesn't negate your role in it. You can see Dee Dee's faults of helping him do bad things, but you did the same and somehow it's different. You refuse to see an ounce of fault and just learn and grow from it. But that's why we love you, giant toddler. Stay whiny and dumb. <laughs> yeah, Chantal likes to point out everybody else's faults, but not her own. Buffy says, you're right, Chantal. It's your actions that make you a crappy person. Can't wait to see Repsion's video, nor can I. I'm going to be reacting to it. Uh, Sports Bob says, goes to meet two Turkish men she has to use Google Translate to speak to on the anniversary of her grandmother's death. Stay classy, Chantal. Yeah, so it's the anniversary of her grandmother's death. And what is she doing? She's running off to meet men. SJ says, I didn't know he was abusive at the beginning. Wow, this guy is so toxic. Why would I hang out with him? Because he's sexy. Ha ha. Chantal, 2021. Yeah, she found that bad boy image to be intoxicating and she just couldn't stay away. Loquisa, I'm sorry, Loquisi says, I am a former DV advocate. Most of my DV victims were men. Abuse is abuse. It doesn't matter what your gender is. I said that earlier, all abuse counts. All victims count, no matter what their sexual identity, no matter what their gender is, all victims matter. All of them, all of their stories, matter all of their experiences matter and trying to come off like only women matter Chantal is wrong and see uh Tiffany says just admit it you want matter back yeah that, that's coming through pretty clear isn't it uh Mango says why did you creepily smile when you mentioned Didi getting hit by Natter because she she's jealous of Didi. She doesn't want Didi in the picture. And she said more than once, on more than one occasion, she wants Didi to get hurt. You know, she's jealous of Didi. And the fact that Didi's there all the time and she's not. Uh, Gina Dodson says, I'm sure Repsion would love to hear how you sing Pumped Up Kicks complete with finger guns referring to the victims of the school shootings. Yeah, I don't know how much Repsion knows about Foodie, but I will say this in case Repsion hears about it. The rabbit hole is deep, my friend, and there's a lot of stuff that he could cover. He could have content for days on this. Donna says, anyone can make a channel but you gave him the platform, no matter what you say. You gave him an audience. No matter what you say or how nasty you say it, you absolutely did. And you refuse to take responsibility for your actions. You're still trying to contact him and you're still texting Dee Dee. So what kind of victim are you really? Maybe if you had just an ounce of understanding of your own complicity in this disaster, 
you might get some empathy. Yeah, she brought him here. And I'm sorry, someone who tries to claim that they're a victim of DV and essay, and yet after essay, they're going on camera half naked multiple times with no problem. I'm looking at you sideways because of that. It don't look right. And then coming on camera and talking about DV and essay with no problem to thousands of strangers, I'm going to look at you sideways for that. Monetizing DV and essay, I'm going to look at you sideways for that. And then claiming somebody hurts you, and yet you're going to hang out with them with no fear. You want to be in a private space with them with no fear to the point where you willingly and eagerly fight with them because you have no fear. I'm really looking at you sideways over that. <sighs> uh, KM says, you don't blame the victims no matter what, unless you're Chantal and the victim is Dee Dee. May, his ex, or literally any other woman. Then you can mock their age, genitals, clothes, job, hair, home, financial situation, voice, personality, and lastly, you can say that you don't care if they get choked out. What a piece of crap. Yeah, imagine someone who's been through DV and essay saying that about another woman. Vile. Very, very vile. Can't see. Uh, Glitter Bomb says, being a victim, though I don't believe you were, isn't a free pass for all the ways you were a perpetrator that caused other women to be abused. You knew exactly who he was and platformed him anyway, just like you did Roman. You gave him his support base. You knew he was messaging all your beezers inappropriately, and you still took his side. You gave him an alibi when he hurt another woman. You were seeking out women to bring into the relationship knowing how abusive Natter is. You are absolutely responsible for all of that. Just facts. Agree. Agree with all of that. Uh, Sun Devil says, Repsion is right. You did help Nads get a channel on YouTube. And not only that, but you knew from the very beginning of seeing him that he was abusive. If I'm not mistaken, didn't you get a lit cigarette thrown at you on date three? The evidence is out there. Quit lying. So third date, she knew what he was about. And she gave him a channel anyway. Like I said, Natter never hid who he was. He never did. And she brought him here anyway. She did. Oh, oops, sorry, jumped ahead, jumped ahead. CJ says, you weren't in love from day one, Chantal. You said it yourself, you didn't like that he was that much to begin with, and you knew that he was toxic because you also admitted that. You chose to keep going back until eventually you loved him. You didn't love him when you were going back through the first few times with knowing he was abusive. This is why you're not a victim, agreed. You know, he exhibited that behavior and she didn't stay away. If anything, she was more intoxicated by it. You know, if she just she just likes playing with fire. She likes playing with piles of dynamite to see if she can stick around long enough before it explodes in her face. CJ says Repsion is an abused man. So how does he not know what abuse is? Because he's not specifically a woman? Shut up. As I said, all abuse matters. All victims matter. All of their stories and experiences matter. It doesn't matter what your gender is. It doesn't matter your sexual identity. If you are a victim of DV or SA, you matter. All survivors matter. 
all survivors of SA and DV matter. If you're someone you've been through DV and SA, you've been through that experience, my heart goes out to you. You are strong, you are warriors. You went from being a victim to being a survivor and that is to be commended. And that extends to men, women, everybody. Let's see. Everybody's saying, hey, you brought him here. Uh, Melanie says, question. You messaged Dee Dee the other day. How did you have her new number if you guys don't talk? Because they're, they talk behind the scenes. That's the obvious answer. They're all a bunch of liars. They talk behind the scenes. She still gives them money. She supports them. Uh, Princess Darkness says, OMG, Chantal, I have said this before and I will say it again. I was in a DV relationship just like you, and it did not take this long to get over it. It's different if you are still living with the person or seeing or hearing from him every day, but you've had no contact with him. This is now about an obsession you have with how you cannot have him because he does not want you. That is what is making you hold on because he has the last word of not wanting you but you want that last word. Guess what? You will never get that, so stop. Uh, Evelyn says she loves the abuse. Don't feel sorry when you're going to see your abuser. Yeah, or trying to see them. That means whatever happened between the two of you, it must not have been that bad because you don't want to stay away. Okay, so that's some of the comments. I'm going to end it here and move on to see what else I can cover today. I want to thank everyone for spending some time with me in my little corner of YouTube. I really appreciate everybody being here and watching my video. Don't forget to like and subscribe on your way out. Thank you very much, and I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful day, and please take care of yourself. Bye-bye.